hello guys welcome to another video and we're going to look at paper 2 from KZN um, this is just to give you one extra paper looked at it quickly and it had some very interesting points so that's the reason uh, it kind of qualified for me to have a look at it otherwise um, yeah let's just give it a bit one extra go for now and then Please, guys, don't forget you have to do these things. Msalufa. Right? If you don't do it, msalufa, it only becomes difficult when you're faced with an exam. So you get to have the experience of trying almost without any hope of getting it right, but you just keep doing. And then, of course, use the videos as reference. Okay, guys, <clears throat> without wasting much time. Let's just run into it. So this paper is pretty similar to the paper that we just did uh, from the first stage. Yeah, the only difference is that this one is full, it's complete. Okay. Question one says, weight in kgs of 20 boys in the soccer squad of school A are given below. So once you have that table like that, you just see that okay it is nicely ordered so not a big deal so we don't have to worry about a disorder of some kind the first thing you just want to do is to get to your mode okay go to stat option three and then you want one variable okay which is option one and then you just punch in everything because you just don't want to to stress yourself with a whole lot of uh, thought and then doing this later as well so 40 47 48 51 53 57 58 ooh, 58 59 59 then we go to 60 60 60 60 61 62 63 64 66 69 so they said 20 boys I said I have 20 data points put in so I hope I traced everything right sometimes when it's a little bit too much like that it gets you into a little bit of a situation so the first question says calculate the mean weight of the boys in this soccer squad so we want the mean go to shift press 1 which is stat and then you go to 4 which is variance and then there we are. What do we want? We want the mean. The mean is that x with the bar. So we go for 2. And then it says 57,75. So here you just don't want to stress yourself too much. You just go for it. So the mean here is 57,75 kgs. Remember? The unit is pretty important at this point, but yeah, either way, it's all alright. So, uh, now that is the most important thing that we need to do, okay? So the next one, ooh, what do they want? They want the standard deviation of the data, so luckily we set things up nicely, it's just that it's a tedious procedure. To keep rocking back and forth and then we hit that one standard deviation is option three so we hit that and then it says it's six comma seven four to two decimal places okay so uh, we're going to say here our standard deviation is going to be six comma seven four uh, well it's a distance so I don't know, should we say cages? Yeah, probably. Let's go for it. Not a big deal because everything is going to be cages here. Unless we're talking about something else like 
yeah let's not even think about what we could be talking about we just run with this one then next question says determine the number of boys that have weight within one standard deviation of the mean okay within one standard deviation of the mean so what is that so of course we're going to look at those that are one standard deviation below and those that are one standard deviation above the mean uh, okay maybe when they say within not outside so we have to look at that range first and then i think we're going to have to look at the boys in that range so let's have a look here let's look at the upper limit okay we, we can just say upper limit is going to be our mean plus our standard deviation which we have here 57,75 plus 6,74 what will that be? alright uh, 6,74 so this becomes 64,49 Let's look at our lower limit. It's going to be equal to our standard deviation minus, sorry, our mean minus the standard deviation, which is going to be 57. Uh, okay, let me go back to my normal mode. It's 57,75 minus. 6,74 okay uh, 57,75 minus 6,74 so we're getting a lower limit of 51,01 .01. so we want only the range of this this number of people that are within within is not outside so we need to look for people that are captured in this range between 51 and 45 sorry 64,5 so let's look at our data and see how many people are within 51 I mean to notice my place this is 51 approximately 51 and then that one is going to be approximately 64,5 let's just say 65 okay so let's look here we're looking for the lower limit is 51 basically is 51 disregarded no it's included because it's still within one standard deviation so we're going to have ourselves here uh, 51 right right and then we continue to our upper limit which is 64,9 which is yeah 64 I mean 64,5 Okay, 64 is included, but anything beyond is not included. So we want to find out how many data values are within these two values. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Of course, with those ones included, I believe. But I'm not too sure about, but when you say within, not exactly one standard deviation, I think these ones are, inclu are excluded. But double check, uh, by the way, there is a memorandum for this thing, so don't be like me and struggle and then yet you have a direction. But either way, when they say within, it doesn't mean up to a standard deviation. That means it should be less than, you know, these limits. So I would, I would rather we disregard those lower limit and upper limits. So we count in between because that is within a standard deviation of that mean. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, what is happening here? So we have 13 boys. But this 64, by the way, remember that is 64,5. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm making a, a mistake so don't be like me but I mean you have to make these decisions at some point right um, we said this is approximately 51 so we cannot include 51 but here we've got 64 comma 5 64 
comma five is slightly higher than that so this is included so it's going to be a total of 14 points so we can say therefore they are 14 uh, boys because they set the number of boys so just be careful of um, some of these numbers here because if you're working with these kinds of things you need to be sure which one to include which one to exclude I think 64 is included because this is a comma 5 essentially routed off to no decimal place it would be a 65 so 64 qualifies on being included okay not a problem so like I said there is a memo available already so please double check with your memo all right not a problem 1.3 uh, now we are told here the following information was obtained from the coach of the soccer squad of school B okay this is another school so that's a different question and then they're telling us that um, there is this sigma notation, sigma of variable x to a number n over there, starting from 1, ending at 22. And they're telling us that that sum is 1320. That says how many boys are in the school. As you know, you're going to take that value, you subtract this one, and then you add 1. Right, right. So 22 minus 1 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So they just said how many. When they say how many, you don't need to do too much. You can just say 22 boys. Okay. Okay, that was point one. 1.3.2. Now the question says now, calculate the mean weight of a boy in the soccer squad of school B. Of course, this one is straightforward. Mean is going to be the total, which is 1,000. Uh, 320 divide by 22 so we just do that on our calculator 1320 divide by 22 so I'm getting 60 so this is going to be 60 kgs all right of course try to answer things in full even though it seems important I mean unnecessary but try to always because you never know when they decide they're going to put uh, some restrictions as to if you don't have a unit to get a penalty. I wish they can be consistent though and say exactly what they want because at times it's ridiculous. You find certain things uh, not really being consistent. Either way, let's continue. Assume that the mean weight of the boys in the soccer squad at B is 60 kgs. We already calculated it anyway. Now, five boys of equal weight, okay? We don't know what this weight is, but how many are they? They are five. Um, I added to the school A, okay? Now, we're going back to question one, okay? They are added to, sorry, five boys of equal weight added to the school A squad so that the mean of both school squads are the same all right right and then calculate the width I mean the weight of each of these five boys okay not a problem so we already know the mean for these ones is 60 so all they're trying to say to us is that the mean for these ones should be 60 now remember we've got 57 comma whatever but now we want the mean to be the same as this one. So this is a nice question. Again, trying to spice it up a bit. So we know that these five boys is going to be five. Say their weight is y. You can just say let the weight of each of five boys added by okay and then it implies that 5y plus what was the total there we have to first do the total so it's going to be another tedious work okay so 40 plus 47 
plus 48 plus 51 plus 53 plus 57 plus 58 uh, plus 58 plus 59 plus 59 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 maybe I should have just said 60 times 4 you know plus 61 plus 62 plus 63 plus 64 plus 66 plus 69 I hope it's all alright so it's 155 ne? so it's 1500 sorry 1155 so so we know that well this implies that um, maybe this is wrong Maybe it's right. Let's start it. This implies that 5y plus that total 1,555. No, no, no. 1,155. All of this over. Remember, they were 20. We added 5. So it's going to be 25. Is equal to the mean weight of these uh, school that those in school B so we're going to just create that equation this is over 1 of course you just cross multiply here this implies that 5y plus 1155 equals let's just do the magic so this is going to be 25 plus sorry not plus but times 60 so it's 1,500 and then we transpose so 5y equals 1,500 minus 1,155 uh, therefore our y okay let's just do that and then divide by 5 so that is 69 kgs Actually, I was answering my own thing. I didn't even read the question. It says calculate the weight of each of these five boys. So that is the one. So I carelessly answered. All right. So that is the that is the case. Um, so it's not a big deal. That was a bit of a nice question because here again you have to show your arithmetic skills to try and use some algebraic techniques to work out an equation and then you solve simultaneously so to speak um, so that was it guys I'm not even going to bother now with the marks and the stories here. we're trying to conserve time so at this point you already are accustomed to with how you score marks in this uh, paper so of course you always have to keep consistent don't be like me and get tired of what is right always make sure you have that checked okay second question here is grouped data uh, what is the story here um, we have a survey was done on 250 people so that is our total to determine the distances they travel to work daily the results are shown on the table of course 0 to 5 uh, kilometers of course distance in kilometers uh, there were 8 and then 5 to 10, 8, 5 to 15. So you can see that these go up by 5. Okay, not a big deal. So this is very easy. You just look at it and then of course once you see that, they are going to ask you to fill it up complete, the cumulative frequency column on the attached sheet. So unfortunately I don't have it. I'm only going to do it here. So it, this first one is alone there. And then we're going to have 8 plus 41. This gives us 49. And then you add this one to the previous plus 63. This becomes 112. Then you add the next one plus 52. Becomes 164. Plus 41. Becomes 205. Plus 38. 
243 then plus 7 250 then of course with the cumulative frequency table or whatever the last frequency or the frequency of the last class should reflect the total of your sample if it doesn't then something is wrong in your calculation okay not a problem then let's go on complete the cumulative uh, sorry draw a cumulative frequency graph or the so-called R drive for the given data on the grid provided on the attached um, answer sheet again I don't have it but I kind of prepared myself a little bit so I've already done myself a bit of a grid here so there's my grid so basically you must have a topic that is your R drive or cumulative frequency graph for the data and then you, you label on your y-axis you have your cumulative frequency and on your x-axis you will have your distances in kilometers and then of course I've already decided that I'm gonna go in tens on the x-axis and then I went in twenties for my y-axis but again when they give you that um, what do you call that thing yeah that one if they give you that thing you have to make it a point that um, just get a pen that writes you have to make it a point that um, your stuff works ne? okay just make sure that you know how to work out those distances on that graph as it is provided and then of course I have uh, 0 to 5 so that means halfway to my data so maybe I must have my midpoints I don't know why I went in tens now I gave myself an extra bit of work but it's fine there's no harm to that so the middle values is going to be the 5 right so I nikarele aningakoni Yegutsala did number say I wish I knew these languages so well, but yeah, I know a bit. That's something, right? Yeah, man. That is a little bit of something. I must know something about something. Okay, so there's my five. If this is ten, halfway should be five, ne? So I don't want to stress msalufa. So let's keep going guys, um, I have, let me just get my question paper closed, alright, but keep it in sight, alright, so 5 goes with what, with 8, ne? 0 to 5, where is my ruler, okay, I like to look for things that I already have in my hand, so 0 goes with um, 8, so 8 is going to be a bit tricky, man. Ish, my choice of scale maybe is terrible, but we will see. Let us just see what happens. Now, I know that this is 20, this is 10, right? If this is 10, then this must be 8, ne? because this is going in 2s. Because this is essentially 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yes. So that last little digit there is my eight so I'll just put my dot in there and smile so five is to eight and the next one um, five to ten so we always draw the upper limit of each class ne? don't make the mistake of uh, doing the midpoints here you take you're doing the upper limits okay ten goes with 49 all right ten to 49 just a bit of a tedious amount of work but yeah get used to it try to find pace because that is important because this thing is with little marks but can take up time so this is 2040 so we want 49 so this is 50 over here 49 is somewhere in between 8 and 9 so we can just I mean sometimes it's not gonna be accurate so yeah at times it's not really accurate but you get something close to what is necessary it should work all right and then the next one is 463 no it's 15 and 112 15 to 112 
so this is 15 here so 112 let's just first get the line Ish, you need to have a ruler that is proper ne? don't have these short rulers that I'm using so I'm just going to use this as my little yeah ne? thinking in Laban he's thinking in jail because this thing is not going to be vertical now, is it? I'll just try and approximate it to the vertical. But just using my eyes, sometimes you can judge by your eyes, but that can be very bad. I needed a better ruler than this, but yeah, I don't have it. I don't have it, so Bafuetu, you bear with this situation here. So I'm looking for 112. So, um, this is 100, 110, 112 is right here. So don't worry about that small dot, it's the big one. It's the big one, okay? That is the one with 15. Now my problem is I am off position. I knew this was going to happen. Damn it, man. See, that dot is supposed to be here. I could almost tell that. Something is going wrong, so don't have too many dots like this. You're going to be in trouble. So this one is out. Yeah, it's my ruler buffet. What can I do? I messed up. All right. Um, there it is. And then we're looking at 20 and 164. 20 to 164. Okay. So let me just get my elevation right. So this is my 60 mark line. I'm just gonna make a faint line there so that I don't run into problems. Okay, yeah boo. So if that is the story here, uh, yeah, it's the key power for it. Then that's all, it's a good day, we're gonna make it as well. So I'm looking for 164, so we said 162.4, so it's going to be here. Ah, just focus on the big dots, the other little marks, I'm trying to get myself into position because I didn't plan my path very well. So the next one is 25. I don't know why I did this, you know. 25. Should have looked for my long ruler because this is really going to give me a hiding. I don't like to be beat up. 25 goes with 205. So we're looking for something very close to 200 over there. So we want 205. Of course, guys, this is not gonna be exactly the best way because you can see now. I'm using adaptive mechanisms to to get it right, but it's 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 horrible. So there is my 200 here. I hope it's this one. Yeah, yo 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 200, 24, and then 05 is somewhere there. Yeah, I quite right. What I guess yes, Langani is about As na yinle. Then 30 goes with uh, for 243. 30 goes with 243. I wanna go go but I out is born Must have a little fate. <laughs> have a little fate. 30 goes with 243. So there is my 240. So I'm just going to try and approximate that position and then I will just hope and pray it is not too bad because I'm starting to feel like a ngati kwan ngage zabakwan what I get accent and up so 240 and then we want 243 so this is 242 43 should be somewhere in between I wanna cook rent I will cook rent 
but again you can see it's steep maybe if I chose the scale a bit shorter maybe you would start to see it coming out nicely okay let's do the last one 35 goes with 250 I, at least this one might be better 35 goes with 250 uh, of course guys this is definitely gonna be highly inaccurate but I think you have the clue right now so 240 to 60 to 50 is somewhere in between which I would put over there I don't have any more to give to this one so we're going to join the black dots and that is our O drive and by the way uh, if you choose the lower class it's gonna be kind of from whatever number minus 5 to 0 and then minus 5 to 0 will just anchor at 0 so you anchor it at 0 yeah well meeting it out something that works and I take something that doesn't work yeah okay. so we do this thing nice and easy so this thing has got to be smooth smartest 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 we were off there does it really have to be too nice uh yeah ne se khoning ke ngake la se ngiyabona ke manje se khone ndinga iplota ngakahle apha yeah doesn't really matter so i shy about it so i longise se zo i longise that is our o drive right there khone ndoye tsekile la it's all because of this stupid position I have assumed <sighs> at some point yeah certain things catch up to me because I mean if you look at this it's it's supposed to be here instead of back there so 35 was supposed to come up here ay 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 yeah, what? It was supposed to come up there. Ay, 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 ay. Now, I'm going to show by AP, AP, can go. So, if you look at the guy, this one. Yeah, when? Yeah, maybe it's not that steep. Maybe it's this path. Maybe it's this path. I said, Moshagel, I said, Moshagel, I said, Moshagel. I answer as you give a food. None in this was born a lieutenant in Jan. And as the Moshile up. So maybe that path is out. This one is in. Okay. Yeah. This one is in. 250 over there 240 something maybe we can bring it down here all right so forget about that extra one it's just my position here that is not doing me any favors it's really killing me but at the end of the day you know what you know what drive is all about and you will have a proper grid to work with so this is just practice which as imperfect as it looks but it gives the idea that we want so if all is well, which is, I think it should not be unwell. So you get your four marks there. And then the next thing, what is that? They say now use the graph to determine the median distance traveled. Indicate on your graph the median distance. Well, the median, you're going to take half of your data. So this is 250. 250 divided by 2 is going to be 125. Then we look for 125 here. Say where is 125? So I got here 120. So this is 2, 4, 5 is going to be somewhere in between. So that point over there marks my 125. Then all you do is just draw a 
horizontal line to the archive which you already are accustomed with it by now at least it's on the accurate segment I'm glad otherwise that one was going to be a bit of a situation and then you just take it down wait Dega wait Dega Hansi yeah, I take it down here by foot. And then if you're looking there, this is just, remember this is 15. So this is about how many units from 15. So this one is counting in how many as well? Yeah, I think one is big. So this is 15, this is 16, this is 17. So it lends me at approximately 17. Okay, so that is not a big deal so my median is going to be 17 they say use your graph okay indicate on your graph the median so this is approximately 17 uh, what was this kilometers okay not a problem so you've shown on your graph so that is the problem so they just said indicate uh, that one and then of course on your answer sheet you'll write the 2.3 that the median distance is going to be approximately 17 kilometers are you happy should be all right guys um that is the statistics section usually pretty easy to handle so Let's just move on to some serious mathematics, you know. Not these things. Not these things, but they can be useful when correctly applied. But I, I don't see that happening in many places so far. Statistics is really being incorrectly applied. As a result, a lot of dictations have been a lot because of that carelessness anyway it's not about that at this point it's all about uh, it's all about work okay it's all about work so let's do the things let's do the things okay so question three says in the diagram below okay in the diagram below did I answer all questions in question two or did I start talking nonsense or something? What happened here? Did I think that kind of goes on? Depend on level again. Yeah, I answered that one correctly. Oh, we completed it here. Then we drew that thing and then we answered there. Okay, so it's fine. No issues. Okay, now we're going to try and sprint. Okay, so in the, in the diagram below A, with coordinates minus 5 is to 2, B with coordinates minus 3 is to 8, and C are vertices of triangle ABC. So there's A, B, C, and we can see those points that they showed us, okay? E is the midpoint of AC. Now, once they tell us that, and E is where? Is exactly on the intercept of AC. So we know that this line is equal to that line that is important because if we have that coordinate we have the middle we can actually work out the coordinates of C using our midpoint expression all right D is a point on the x-axis okay where is D there such that a line perpendicular such that AD is a line perpendicular to the x-axis and what do you know if it is perpendicular to the x-axis it is parallel to the y-axis because the y-axis are perpendicular to the x-axis themselves. Msalov. So that is the story that we can gather from there because we know that this is exactly perpendicular to the x-axis and therefore parallel line. And if this is parallel, it means this, y, this x value at A is the same as the x value at D. So D is effectively minus 5 and 0. Of course, you're going to have to account for this because this is your thing. So that's why you have to make sure you indicate it in a different color so that you can answer by 
justifying why you're saying that it's because of this given information so don't assume that because they gave it to you then they also know it is so they want you to display your understanding that it is indeed like that all right so now alpha is the angle of inclination of ac okay we can see it's that obtuse angle okay not a problem so what can we do quickly don't want to exhaust too much uh, energy on this but you really do want to look at it nicely first of all we don't know where m is no mention of m so we don't care about it but it looks like it's in the middle somewhere but whatever it is but we know that if we have two points you know on one line those are collinear points that means we can determine the gradient of that line and using any one of these points we can actually determine what the um, the co i mean the equation of that line all right not a problem what about ac we've got two points on ac which are collinear we can also determine the equation of this line and more because we know that is the midpoint we can actually determine the coordinates of c that means we can also determine its y intercept from the equation no problem what else can we do the other thing that we can do we can calculate alpha because from the equation or the gradient of this line we will get our alpha that's good news now if we have the coordinates of c it means we can also use bc to calculate the equation of bc then that means we can determine its x-intercept as well its y-intercept that means we can pretty much get everything so what about theta well theta is going to be a bit of a, a beast but theta is made up of two angles if you think about it if we draw a line a horizontal line that is parallel to the axis axis but through point a we will have to do some construction if we were to think about it we know very well that this portion of this angle here you see this big part when we do an arc 10 of this grid it's going to give us the negative component which is that small angle over there it is going to exactly be equal to that those would be alternate angles so we'll get that portion the second thing if we know the gradient of a b it will make a particular angle with the horizontal and then if we take arc 10 of that it's going to give us the top portion and therefore theta is going to be those two angles added together so we have a bit of a game plan so let's have a look and see how many questions can we answer without needing too much assistance all right um let's just keep going guys i do not want to waste your time determine the coordinates of m the midpoint of a b okay they're only telling us now that that is the midpoint of a b okay so we've got two points so we know here we can start our question three three point one goes like that m is the point such that x at a plus x at b over 2 is 2y at a plus y at b over 2 okay uh, which implies that our m is going to be we substitute this time so it's going to be minus 5 minus 3 of course plus minus is going to be minus 3 over 2 is 2 uh, 2 plus 8 over 2 therefore our m is going to be minus 8 divided by 2 is minus 4 right this one is 10 divided by 2 that is 5 great so that is fine so we are sorted over there so we are in a very good position of giving ourselves those two marks but of course as much as that you may have such things here it's not like physics where <laughs> you get a mark for a formula and then you get a mark for substitution it depends on how many marks they are giving a three mark question yes most likely like that but when it's just two marks probably the answers but they want a show of where they come from okay let's quickly move write down the coordinates of point d again when they say write down life is easy because we don't have to say all the theory that 
we would have had to say so if minus 5 is to 0 it's done so already we were prepared though to explain if they needed us because if they said determine then you know you're going to have to say more than just the answer ne? but when they say write down a what is then it means you just go about it the easy way so I'm sure you already are accustomed to the way questions are asked and how answers are to be generated. So show that the coordinates of C are minus 7 and 2. Okay, now they want you to show it. But we know very well that, ah, uh, we know this situation that C is going to be this point here. That x at C plus x at A over 2 is going to be equal to the x at e and that will be into y at c plus y at a uh, over 2 equals the y at e of course you may be asked a question why are you saying that you can say e is the midpoint of ac that's what they told us but it has to come out it has to come out because they gave it to you but they want you to demonstrate your understanding it implies that our C is standing like that X at C is just X at C uh, minus because plus minus is going to be minus 5 over 2 equals 1 okay which we're going to go for it and say Y at C plus 2 over 2 equals 0 ne. and then we go on and say this implies that C is in a situation like that you transpose that to right we transpose that to the not transpose but you just cross multiply there I mean this is over 1 so easy so that remains and then you get a 2 that you transpose the 5 you get x at c being equal to 7 is 2. You do the same here. 2 there is 0. Then you transpose that. It becomes a minus 2. So y at c is minus 2. Then you can conclude that c is 7 is 2 minus 2. Is, that in, is, is it not what they wanted? That's what they wanted. And then, of course, how many marks? Just 2. Wow. That's great. You're getting those 2 marks. Ka, kwaba. Yeah, ne? sometimes they can be quite stingy. 3.4. Okay, we are done. Now calculate the length of AC. Leave your answer in simplest said form. So you can't leave it complicated. You take it down to no further taking down. Ne? Mm. So we know that AC is going to be the square root x at C minus x at a all squared plus y at c minus y at a that is the story we substitute y at c is 7 okay minus y sorry minus x at a is minus 5 so minus minus 5 is going to be plus 5 squared plus y at c is minus 2 y at a is minus 2 all squared Okay, let's do the math. So I have here the situation. That one as well. So I'm getting here. Uh, hey, this one simplifies it. This calculator is dangerous. It already simplified it and I don't like it. Damn. Mm, 16 times 10 is what? I want it nice and easy. 160. Yeah. Which is going to be 4 root 10. Now I'm happy. So my calculator already does that for me. Yo. This calculator is going to get me killed. Alright, not a problem. So how many marks was that? 
Ah, uh, two marks. Okay. Correct substitution and the answer in the required form, of course. That is units. Don't forget. Don't forget, like I almost did. 3.5. So let's keep moving, guys. We don't want to waste time. Uh, it says, determine the coordinates of F if F lies in the first quadrant. <laughs> okay, sorry. Such that C A B F is a parallelogram. Okay, not a problem. Let's do some construction here to aid ourselves with the given information. Uh, this is going to be quite easy. It's usually very easy because um, there are many ways. You can use ratios and proportions, whatever. But I'm just going to try and be, you yeah, know, it doesn't have to be an accurate structure, but it has to really give this thing. But now this one must be in the first quadrant. Ah, the angulation has already... If I had my protractor, I would actually do this. So they're saying this is in the first quadrant. So somewhere there. Okay, maybe let's extend our x-axis. So that we can appreciate this thing. Okay, not a problem. But it's not gonna go to the first quadrant, yeah? Yeah, it's a mess, ne? but it's fine. As long as we have something. Look at me now. Having a mixed masala of things here. The why the reason I'm doing it in dotted lines is because this is not originally there, but I am making it there. Okay, so if this be a parallelogram, of course it's going to be ugly. Of course the diagram is probably not drawn to scale, that's why it doesn't look too nice. But all we know is that properties of a parallelogram is that um, the opposite sides are equal first. Uh, let's just make like that. They are equal and parallel to each other. So that one is going to be parallel to that one. And it's going to be equal to this one as well in length. So we know the length of AC, so that would be the length of that one, which means it's going to be square root of 10 units as well. Not a problem. So the other thing is that we can tell that now BC becomes a diagonal of this little thingy. But now what property of parallelograms do we know? We know that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other at a common point. So that means we can actually do that to help ourselves to solve because they will want the coordinates of... Um, <coughs> so it's already not looking great but it doesn't matter. So that means if we can find this midpoint that can help us to work our way back to this F place here. Alright, so um, they want the coordinates of F. Nice, nice, nice. But the other thing that you can do, uh, yeah, but this is not really looking great. It's not really looking great. Uh, let's see. If you look at this position here and say, you look at that coordinate from this corner because there has to be some symmetricalness in there. Um, but the problem is that this is slanted, it's not straight, so I'm not sure if it is going to be accurate. But you can see how far is that point from this one on the horizontal plane. Point B is basically 5 minus 3, which is just 2 units to that. And then we know the coordinates of C now. Um, 
that it's minus seven and is seven and two. Ne? So maybe could we use the same thing and say fine? If this is seven, then that should be nine. Yeah, doch. Let's not do that. It's dangerous. Well, we're just going to call this. This is A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's call this point G. Okay? Not a problem. We're going to just plan our way. Because uh, I know it's possible to say that, but I'm not sure with this slant if it is going to be correct. But let's see. It will be proven by the proper method. Let's just go about it algebraically. We can say fine. We know that we're going to say let G let G be the point of intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram. That's the only one that they spoke about. And we can say therefore G is the midpoint of BC. Okay. Again, why do you say that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other? Great, 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 great. Now we've set up our thing. So we want to solve our G here. I'm just going to try and do it over here. This implies that G is going to have these coordinates. And I'm just going to jump ahead here and not waste time. So it's going to be X, which is minus 3, uh, plus 7 over 2 is 2. Uh, 8 minus 2 over 2 which tells me that my g is going to be this one it's going to be 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2 okay and then uh, this is going to be 4 divided by 2 which is just going to be no no no, no. this is going to be 6 divided by 2 which is 3 okay so I have a G like that, which is the midpoint, okay? So if my G is like that, is 2 is to 3, what is going to happen? It will follow that. Uh, so this is 3.5 continued, okay? So it follows that. This implies for me that my F is going to be the point such that we have x at a plus x at f over 2 equals the x coordinate at g. All right, it follows the same pattern that we're going to say y at a plus y at f over 2 equals y at g. g is the midpoint of. Um, of AF. Okay. Great. Not a problem. That's the diagonal. Ne? Right. This follows that our F is going to be X at A is minus 5 uh, plus just say X at F over 2 is equal to X at G which is 2 is 2 Y at A which is 2 plus y at f over 2 equals 3. Now we can just work it out and say also implies that our f is standing in a situation like that. You multiply that there, you get a 4. You bring in a 5, it becomes a 9. So x at f equals 9. So hey, it worked. That technique was quicker. But you'll have to find a way of explaining it because you have to. This is 2. This is 2 times 3, which is 6. Minus 2 is going to be 4. So that means our y at f is going to be 4. And of course it's positive, right? Which is great. Therefore f is 9 is to 4. Alright. 
So that technique could have worked, but we'll have to refine it and find a way of explaining it as to how we came about it. Of course, we went about it a bit longish for just two marks. I don't know if there was something uh, better to say. I don't know. But you need to be able to explain the, what you did because to just show up with things, unless they say write down, it's nicer when they say write down, but once they say determine, you have to find a way of explaining how you went about it. So for me, this was pivotal, and then that is essentially the answer. The rest is a means to an end. Of course, it looks a bit longish, but it was not too long to be tiring. All right, let's just continue. So we have now determined the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Ah, already M is the midpoint. So that means we need the coordinates of that midpoint. And then we just draw a perpendicular line that bisects that point, okay? So there's our perpendicular line. So you know the gradients of perpendicular lines. So we need the coordinates of M. And then we'll use the gradient of AB to get the gradient of that line. And then we will be sorted. Okay, so 3.6 is answered this way. Um, we can say m is going to be x at b, say minus 3, minus 5 over 2 is 2, uh, 8, plus 2 over 2, right? Therefore, our m is, this is going to be minus 8 divided by 2 is minus 4, is 2. This is 10 divided by 2 is 5, okay? So that is the story there. So our m is like that. So if our m is like that, so what are we going to do now? What must we can do? Uh... So, what we need to do is to say, well, we know though that the M of the line, I don't know what is this line, that is the perpendicular line, let's say the line perpendicular is equal to minus 1 divided by the gradient of AB. So I'm just rushing it now. I don't know if it is necessary to start off by writing those formulae and stuff. I, I don't think there's such restrictions as in physical science, but hey, you never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe let's make this one a conclusion. We can say, okay, but what? M of the perpendicular line multiplied by M of AB is equal to minus 1. Okay. Yeah. Here you just have perpendicular lines they have their gradients multiplying to minus 1. Therefore, we make that conclusion so that we don't get fouled after doing such a great job. This one, M of AB, we're just going to jump in and substitute here. Uh, it's going to be Y at B, which is 8 minus 2 divided by minus 3 minus minus 5, which is going to be plus 5, okay? So let's see, what are we going to get? So we have a nice calculator. It saves us from ourselves. So 1 divided by this one is going to be 8 minus 2 divided by minus 3 plus 5. But in any case, this is the same as 6 divided by 2, which is just 3. Then this is going to be minus 3, effectively. So it's minus a third. What did I say? Yeah, yeah, it becomes just minus a third. I almost lied to you, so minus one over three. Okay, I said, I said minus three, so it's minus a third. Okay, so once we have our lovely thingy there, we can say this implies that the line is such that y equals minus 1 over 3x plus c. And we know that through point m, which is 
newly found as minus 4 is to 5. We have 5 equals minus 1 over 3 is to minus 4 plus c. Therefore, c is going to be, here we get 4 over 3. Né? Then we transpose that, so 5 minus uh, 4, oops, let's just do it that way, minus 4 over 3. I'm not going to stress myself, it's 11 over 3. Therefore, y equals minus 1 over 3x plus 11 over 3. Then that's the equation of the line. Of course, that was a bit of marks there, so it's 4 marks. Yeah, you had to do a bit of a show, right? Right. But I think getting that is important. And getting its gradient is also important. Getting the value of c is important, and then writing your equation. So this is how we do it. You see how I am so addicted to this thing. I said I was not going to do it, but I've just done it. Ah, <sighs> this guy. Okay, let's keep going, guys. There's a bit of work here. This was a busy one. Calculate the size of alpha, the angle of inclination of AC. Mm. Okay, we're not going to have a problem here. So we have here 3.7. So we can just say 10 of alpha is equal to m of a c. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That one you don't have to explain. It's like that. So 10 of alpha is going to be equal to. We just go ahead and do it. This one is going to be. Uh, say 2 minus minus 2 is going to be 2 plus 2 divide by uh, I started on a so it's going to be minus 5 minus 7 what is that so this is 4 divide by 12 minus 12 so it is minus a third. So this line is parallel to it's parallel to that perpendicular bisector. Ne? Yeah, that's what it means. Minus a third. Okay. Okay, not a problem. So we know that therefore our alpha is going to be. We already know that this is going to be in the second quadrant. So it's going to be one eighty degrees minus shift 10 of a third so here you're just going to write this third as positive so i mean you have plenty of options here to do this i mean it's very easy guys so at times you just have to find a way that makes life easy for you because it's really not a big deal but as you keep working you keep gaining experience, then you start becoming comfortable with a few things in an easy way. So this is 161,57 degrees, all right? Um, so that is cool. That is cool. So we are happy. So not a problem. Um, is there anything else? Nope. Uh, how many marks are they giving here? Three marks. Wow. Okay, maybe for this, for the substitution and for the answer. Sometimes they can be generous. 3.8. Okay. Let's quickly move, guys. Eh? Time is going against us, and you know the power cuts are going to happen. So we have here determine the equation of the line parallel to AB passing through E. Okay, we have to demonstrate that line. Uh, where is my ruler? Oh, because I am. I am better to see I am fit. Like even if I have figure no bag of trigonometry, you know. Ah, uh, that would be nice if we can. It is important 
for us to get to that trigonometry. I don't know with this time doing what it's doing. And I'm still stuck with analytical geometry. I had hoped I would be done by this time. Okay, it's fine. I know at nine they're gonna take it. They are going to take it. Whether we like it or not, it's going. And at night we can't do anything. All right, guys, ah, if they cut us, they cut us. What can we do? Now let's go on and see what is the story is so. Now we want the equation of the line parallel to AB uh, passing through E. Okay, okay. Not a problem. Um, <clears throat> so here we know that, well, the gradient of that line is going to be the same. And we already calculated it above. We know that it's going to be effectively 3. Ne? It's 3. So we can say here M line is going to be equal to MAB. Therefore, the gradient of the line is going to be equal to 3. Okay, Its perpendicular bisector has a minus a third. So phew, we don't have to worry about anything here. So we can just say through E, or we can say therefore, this implies that the line, which is this one, Y equals 3X plus C, then through point E, which is 1 is to 0, we have 0 equals 3 into 1 plus C, therefore our C is going to be minus 3, Therefore, y is going to be 3x minus 3. This looks like the free state question. Ne? Yeah, man. It's like that free state question, the free state one. How many marks are they giving here? Three marks. Okay. Uh, I do believe that this is important, that is important, and that is important. So quickly, we move on. 3.9. Here, man. And then they say calculate the size of angle theta. Okay, two marks. This is easy now because why? Well, what makes it easy is the fact that the angle of inclination of this line, because it's parallel to that line, uh, is going to be this angle here, right? So I don't know what we're going to call it. Let's call it beta, 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 beta. So beta is going to be equal to theta, y. These are corresponding angles, y, because this line is parallel to that. So we are happy now. They made us, okay, they made us a bit of a, an absolution because we're going to have a bit of a situation to try and draw our lines and then work out things. Now they made it easy. So we can just say, fine, let angle of inclination of line in 3.8 above B beta. Therefore, we know that tan beta is going to be equal to the gradient of line, which is going to be 3. Therefore, beta is going to be arc 10 of 3. It's in the first quadrant. We don't have to worry about other things. So arc 10 of 3 is basically 71,57 degrees to two decimal places. All right. So we are happy. We have done it. We can say, but we know that theta is equal to beta. We can say corresponding angles. Why? We know that AB is parallel to the line. Whatever line it is, we never gave it a name. We can say, therefore, our theta is going to be 71,57 degrees. Answer. <coughs> so we are sorted here. So how many marks can we get here? They are just giving two marks. I do think this and that statement is what is a two marks not three 
So it's what actually makes this thing happen. So you can see that, yeah, marks are a lot in analytical geometry, but it takes a bit of a toll on someone. Okay. Usually this very first question is usually tedious and tiring. Now they're saying calculate the area of ABC. Hmm. Now it's easy because we already calculated AC. Now we have theta. All we need is basically AB. Once we find AB, we use our area rule. We don't want any more troubles for ourselves, right? But at the same time, you can just calculate that angle, I mean that line. You know that that is going to be perpendicular to this one because we saw that the gradient of that perpendicular bisector is effectively equal to the gradient of AB. So in a way, you can use half base times height, but I'm going to use the area rule because, I mean, I've not used it in a while. So 3.10, okay, not 3.10, don't say 3.10, this is 3.10. After that decimal, you don't have 10, 20, 30. You just call it as it is, 10, 12, 15. Be, be proud, man, of your subject. Don't be careless about it. Huh? Make it look nice. Make it look, you know, carry some weight. Don't make it look like some cheap thing that anyone can do. Not anyone can do maths, eh? Mm. Of course, for many varied reasons, but that's just the, the, the end point. Not everyone does maths. So those who do it must be proud of doing it, and those who don't do it must be proud of what they're doing also, but they must know it well, whatever it is that they will be doing. So we can say, fine, in triangle ABC, all we know is that AB is going to be... Were we ever asked? No, we were not. So let's do it. Um, we know that AB is going to be... I'm just going to go in and substitute here. I do not have time. Minus 3 plus 5 squared plus uh, 8 minus 2 squared. There's no time here now for manga manga business here. Yeah, share, shrub of it. Cut a segment. A sinus is cut. So, says Nanking and Kuruga cool. Younger business cut. As a result, we don't have the patience anymore. I will. That can't be true. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, AB is equal to AC. I win Zinjan. And it's in me at Lalani. You win. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, no. Alba Lingan, Dimoshanya. This is two root ten. Indian Scandabono root ten units, okay? What we send you about the Lenang four root ten, okay? Hypersensor Kalinian base. It habe, in a match. So we can say, well, area of triangle ABC is going to be equal to half, say, AB times AC sine theta. That's just the area rule. We don't have to explain it. This is half AB. We now know is. 2 root 10. AC, we found out it's 4 root 10 above. And then sine of our newly found angle. What did we find? 71,57 degrees. So we do our thing. We do our thing. All right. Uh, but my theta is wrong. Ah. I played a dangerous game. That angle is 90 degrees, man. Damn! That is not correct. This is 90 degrees. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Send your manga. This is 90 degrees, man. It's not like this. Now we'll have to go and redo this because we found out that that perpendicular bisect of that line was effectively parallel to AB. AC and I made an error there of just considering one portion and that was not good. That was not good. 
yeah that was not good okay so not a problem I will find a way of rectifying that so that's 0 comma 5 into 2 root 10 oops now in we move and change the speed of light. Go in the end and have a jungle no abuke and go. Sign of 90 is 1, right? So we're not gonna bother that. This is 40 units squared. Alright, so that means we have to rectify our issue up there before to connect in as I went to a pioneer if we don't do it. 4 marks, okay. Hmm. We get a mark for that. Correct substitution, the answer. Um, maybe the substitution there is also important, so four marks. And then, of course, that adds the 24 marks. But let's rectify our, our issue here. Then how do we calculate the angle theta here? Angle theta, we can just say um, 3 point uh, what was that 3.9 I'm just going to rectify this there's a bit of a situation we discovered that the gradient of this line is the same as the gradient of this one so in the end we can just be a bit mathematical here we can say m a b multiplied by m a c I mean we realized it so we're going to try and be silly about it is equal to what is the gradient of AB. Is there any place where we calculated the gradient? Um, hmm, I don't remember, you know. I absolutely do not, but I think we did. Yeah, we calculated that gradient and we got it to be minus 3. Ne. Yes, it's going to be minus 3. Where did we have? Yeah, we calculated the gradient of AC from above by looking for alpha. And uh, therefore we got what? We got minus 3. And then we calculated the gradient of AB from above. Yeah, so this is going to be, gradient of AB was uh, 3 multiplied by that of AC. We got minus a third. Ne? Yes, we did, which is minus 1 can say therefore AB is perpendicular to AC therefore theta is 90 degrees so that is how you could have been crafty so that you can master this thing and I believe that this is how we get our two marks ne. wonderful so <clears throat> sometimes you have to associate certain things yes there is a long method but the long method can be a bit of a situation. Alright guys, I hope you liked that one. I became a bit clumsy towards that end. So let's just keep moving. See how far we go before they take our power. If they don't, we continue. If they do it, we cut it. Ne? Yeah. Question 4 says in the diagram, the circle TS. So, I'm not going to indulge too much here. I want to move guys so you already know what to do now so just giving you a bit of a wrap you know a wrap so in the diagram um, uh, the circle TS they is T and S centered at C which is 3 and minus 1 has a radius CT okay which is 10 units so they've indicated it and then they are saying PTR PTR where R is K and 21 so there is the point we can see it is a tangent to the circle so what do we know about tangents to circles they meet the radius at 90 degrees okay PS is a tangent to the circle at S all right so again if this be the tangent at S so that means a line drawn from the center of that circle to this tangent should be perpendicular to that tangent. It's in dotted lines because it did not exist. But that is the impression. And if this is perpendicular, what else do we know? They are saying now PS is a tangent to the circle at S and is parallel to the x-axis. So this parallelity here 
already tells us that if this is parallel and it is perpendicular to that line like that, then this must also be parallel to the y-axis, telling us that the coordinates of s is going to be 3 is to whatever y value we will get. Okay, which at this point, um, we know that this is the radius, so it's going to be 10 units as well. So if it is 10 units, so from minus 1 to 10, so what is that? If we want 10 units from minus 1, so we're just going to take it as 1. 1 plus 10 is what? Is 11. Ne. Yeah, so this is going to be minus 11 by using our radius there. So we already have those coordinates. So always work as best as you can with your diagram before it starts giving you a nightmare. All right, PC, TC, and CR are drawn, and then TR is 20 units, okay? So we can see that over there. Now it says, give a reason why CT is perpendicular to TR. We know that the tangent is perpendicular to radius. That's a fact. I don't think it's a theorem per se, is it? It's a, coro it's a corollary. Yeah, there's the one mark. It's done. Calculate the value of K where R is the in the first quadrant. Okay, not a problem. So here we know we have a right angled triangle. We know these two sides. So we can work out our hypotenuse by using Pythagoras. And then once we have this, we use our distance formula to work out the unknown okay so it's four marks so it's a bit of work okay let's do it without wasting a whole lot of time i i took 30 minutes but fit in sense a question in fact more than 30 minutes question one hi 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 so we know that the radius is always perpendicular to tangent that was that one, 4.2. Now we know here, fine, we're going to say uh, try in triangle CTR, right. We know that, well, CR is going to be the square root of uh, TR squared plus CT scan, computed tomography squared and of course this is from Pythagoras okay write it properly though don't write Pyth it's not correct so TR is 20 squared plus 10 squared and then what is that so 20 squared is 400 ne? plus a hundred is gonna be 300 Oh, I lied. Yeah, 400 plus 1. 500. Yes, and then the square root of 500. Kimang, it's 10 square root of 5. Yeah, that is fine. Because it's 100 times 5 units. We can say, but... CR is equal to... Uh, let's just say CR squared... is going to be equal to uh, x at r minus x at c all squared plus y at r minus y at c all squared. Now we know that 10 root 5 squared is going to be equal to x at r is k minus 3 squared plus this is uh, 21 minus minus is going to be plus 1 squared then of course 10 squared is 100 times 5 we go back to 500 equals uh, this we leave it as it is because it can be worked nicely plus 21 22 squared is 484 okay we can say this implies that k minus 3 squared is going to be 500 minus 484 
which implies that k minus 3 is equal to so it's 16 okay this is squared and then of course you take the square root it implies that k minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4 therefore k is going to be equal to of course we're going to take the positive value so when x is 4 you transpose that it becomes um, 7 because the other one is going to be minus 4 plus 3 which is minus 1 minus 1 takes us to the fourth quadrant so they said it's in the first quadrant so that is it we are happy so that was a bit of work again I think working this one out over here and actually substituting things in there and actually working things out in there and we can give you for substitution over there so there's the four marks easy 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 stuff not a big deal all right all right all right all right okay now it says write down the equation of the circle okay 4.3 answered the equation of the circle is going to be x minus 3 you always put the opposite sign for the for these ones uh, or squared plus y this one is going to be plus 1 or squared equals 100 ne? because 10 squared is a hundred that was the radius ah don't fall how many marks one hmm yeah maybe two marks one for that and that easy 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 yes. I'm going to need a penny cover for it. It's cut, it's cut, it's cut, it's cut. It says hamburger cool. It says hamburger cool 4.4. Then write down the equation of PS. Again, they just said write down. So we worked it out. It's going to be minus 11. So we know that Y is going to be equal to minus 11. Ne. So that is as good as uh, that. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. So I think uh, we are sorted here. One mark, 4.5. Now they're saying the equation of the tangent PTR, so they're giving us the equation of that line, is 3y equals 4x plus 35. Calculate the coordinates of P. Okay, not a problem. We know for a fact that, well, P is the point where X is 2 minus 11. We don't want to say too much stories here. Nah. We can say Okay, we can say P is such that we use that equation. We know that 3 is 2 minus 11. We're not going to say a lot now. Sigma Shagel, 4x uh, plus 35, okay? Which implies what? This uh, is 33, ne? Yeah, I think so. 3 times 11. Yeah, it's 33. So this is minus 33. Then we bring in this one. Minus 35 equals 4x. This also implies that 4x is equal to minus. Okay, this is 68. Therefore, x is going to be 17. Of course, minus 17. So we are sorted. So you can say therefore P is the point minus 17 is to minus 11. Are you happy? You should be. That was not too difficult. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. This is just repeating it. Maybe this other question, This maybe this one is not important. But it's already there so correct substitution into the correct formula and then yeah there you go so 
Yani, sa mo balega ke ba fet. Calculate the length of PT. Hmm. What would be the length of PT ba fet? Think about it. You know that these are tangents from the same point outside the circle. Therefore, they should be equal. There's that theorem. But now, all you need to do here is just to find that line. That line is going to be the x coordinate here minus that one or my, that one minus this one. But I would rather take um, the bigger value so it becomes a positive. So I'll take this one. I will take that one from this one. Then I'll say these ones are equal because these are tangents from the same point. So I will say fine. I can just simply say PS is equal to x at s minus x at p. This is a horizontal line. All right, not a big deal. Which is going to be 3 minus into minus 17. So this is going to be 20 units. You can say but ps is equal to pt. There's a tangent from same point outside circle. Done. So therefore our pt is equal to 20 units. Sorted. Now you have yourself those 17 marks. Again, I mean, you will speed up once you become comfortable with things. Uh, so, um, I mean, that is the story there. That is the story. That is the story. Okay. Let's leave it at that. Maybe we can just simply say, fine, this and that is important and that one. This is exactly the same conclusion. So, there is the three marks. Don't know why I like to do this. Okay, guys, let's just explore a bit of our trigonometry and see if we are lucky they don't cut the power. We move on. If they cut the power, then we are done. Okay, let's see how much we can go in this uh, 15 minutes. So, here you always are going to have this terminal arm diagrams. So, if cos, if 5 cos a equals root 2. I mean, 2 root 6, where a is between 90 and 360. So this is from the second quadrant to the fourth. The first is eliminated. Calculate, without using a calculator, with the aid of a diagram, the values. Of course, they don't even have to tell you that. You need to know that you need a diagram here. Otherwise, life becomes a bit cold. So 5.1, we know that cos of a is going to be root 6 over 5. I've already sorted it. So let's do our Cartesian plane diagram there. Now A is an angle in the either second, third or fourth, but the first is eliminated from that constraint. So obviously cos is positive in the fourth quadrant, so this should be an angle here. All right, so that is the angle A. Don't worry about how it looks. Uh, it looks like it's a reflex angle, or you can make this one the negative angle. Still okay. But this is the correct way to portray it. And then, of course, cos is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent here is 2 root 6. Hypotenuse is 5. Ne. And then what would be the adjacent? We're going to have to use Pythagoras. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. What is x is 2 root 6 squared plus y squared equals um, 5 squared. This is going to be 4 times 6, that is 24. Plus y squared equals 25, therefore y squared is equal to 1, therefore y is plus or minus 1. But now which one is it? In the fourth quadrant, y is negative, therefore y is minus 1. So we know that we have minus 1 over there. So always do your diagram and work it out. Stat, don't wait, because you're going to get marks from there. 
but you don't want to have yourself a problem of finding yourself stuck. So they are saying now we have to calculate minus square root 6 times 10 of a. Okay, that is the first question there. Then it's a bit of marks, but I think the marks are coming from here as well. This is equal to minus root 6 into 10 of a. 10 is always opposite of adjacent, so it's going to be minus 1 over 2 root 6. And then the root 6 is cancel, so we get 1 over 2. So this one is a half because, remember 10 was going to be negative, but we multiplied by negative. So we are sorted. So correct substitution here and the answer. And then, of course, the other mark comes from here. Of course, here you have to show that you did Pythagoras, but this comes from the substitution. So this is where these four marks come from. So 5.1.2, 2a, sine of 2a, okay? So sine of 2a is effectively 2 sine a cos of a, ne? easy. Double angle identities, they must not scare you. There's nothing serious here. Always keep them close. They will come and nag you. All right. Now what is 2 into sine of a is going to be opposite of hypotenuse, so it's minus 1 over 5 into this one. Already know that it's 2 root 6 over uh, 5. Then when you do the multiplication here, we're going to get 4 root 6 over 5 by 5 is 25. Can we take it further than this? Uh, I don't think so. I think that is it. So some things you cannot do much about. Uh, by the way, this is negative. Be careful of the signs. Um, yeah. I don't think there's more we can do there. We just leave it at that. So, uh, how many marks? Four marks as well. Okay, that was a bit. So, um, I think for this expansion, uh, of course, for each one of these two, but I mean this one was roughly given, so I don't know why you would get a mark for it, but yeah, they decided they are very generous at this point in time. Okay, so let's run to 5.2. 5.2 says, given sine 18 equals P, so this is over 1, always, always express it as a fraction so that you can be able to do this. You see, they're not even telling you, but 18 degrees is an angle in the first quadrant, so we know that this is 18 degrees, this will be 90 degrees, so sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so this is P over 1. It's sort of like a standard circle with that radius of 1. Then, of course, from Pythagoras, we're going to have here x squared plus 1 squared equals, ah, not 1, but p equals 1 squared. Therefore, I know x squared is going to be 1 minus p squared. Therefore, x is going to be the positive square root of 1 minus p squared. Why positive? Because x is positive in the first quadrant. So I'm sorted. So always do this so that you don't find yourself suffering. Okay, let's answer the questions as quickly as we can. Now they want us to do cos of 18 degrees. And by the way, whenever you have a proper angle there, always work out the other one. This and that are going to be complementary. We already have a 90. So you can just say 90 minus 18 is 72. Always work it out because you might need it. You might need it or some multiple of it by using your compound angles or double angles. So they like to hide things. So make sure just do the thing that must be done. Always when you have an opportunity to work out angles, work them out instead. So 5.1.2 cos of 18 degrees this is going to be what adjacent of a hypotenuse so this is going to be a root 1 minus p squared over 1 is basically that so no stress here 
so you get your two marks one mark for this and one mark for that correct substitution over there so there's your full two marks 5.2.2 sum of share cos of 48 cos of 48 Now, what is that related to? Of course, you can see five marks, but I mean, I think they were really outrageous. This is nothing. 48 is not related to 18 or 72, is it? Maybe, let's, let's check. What about, yeah, no, it's not. But what we need is a special angle and maybe that one. So let's see if we say 30, yeah, I think it's 30 plus 18. Yeah, well, so this is the same as cos of 30 degrees plus 18 degrees so if you don't find an easy or direct way try to find a special angle and create some compound angle or some double angle it always works so you're going to do the expansion of course here this is going to be cos 30 degrees cos of 18 degrees the sign changes to sine of 30 degrees times sine of 18 degrees now you are sorted cos of 30 is the root 3 over 2 multiplied by cos of 18 here is 1 minus a root minus p squared okay one <sighs> square root of 1 minus p squared we, we got it up there then minus here sine of 30 is a half multiplied by sine of 18 here is just p okay so that is the story we have here so basically all you're going to end up with is just the square root of 3 into 1 minus p squared. Uh, yeah, that's how it's going to be there when you simplify that thing. Over 2 minus p over 2. Which, there's a common denominator of 2 here. And then those two simply add on top and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's going to be 3 minus 3p three squared when you work out your bracket there 3 minus 3p three squared then this one minus p over here all of that over 2 that is the best simplification you can get so I think here the key was that and then the expansion the substitution the answer but maybe maybe that one there as well because they gave you 5 marks so that is it all right guys let's go on we are doing fine so far looks like the trigonometry here was a bit of a yeah but maybe i need to be scared too so that i can move ne? sine of 19 degrees so i mean sorry not 19 degrees sine of 9 degrees how will you get 9 degrees remember 9 is half of 18 so that means we must have used a double angle there. So we need to take it back to some sort of a double angle so that it can make sense. So sine of 19 is basically, okay, maybe it's not gonna come out nicely like that. So some questions are indirect, okay? Because I mean, if you start from here, it's, it's gonna be trouble, ne? But we want to work out something that is gonna take us. How about course? Of 18 degrees because if we say sine it becomes say sine of 18 degrees is going to give us 2 sine 9 degrees times cos of 9 degrees but now we don't know cos of 9 degrees so we're gonna be in trouble so we can't use the double angle of sine but the double angle for cos is great why because we know that this could be 1 minus 2 sine squared of 9 degrees because this is a double angle when it's 18 and as a result we know what cos 18 is right cos of 18 is basically that square root of 1 minus p squared equals and then here we have 1 minus 2 sine squared of 9 degrees okay then of course we transpose this let's just interchange so we're gonna have 2 sine squared 9 degrees into the square root of 1 minus p squared we transpose 1 minus 1 okay great uh actually no so this is going to be 2 sine squared 9 degrees equals 1 minus this one 1 minus p squared 
Okay, guys, so here we divide by 2. So sine of 9 degrees is going to be equal to the square root. You're taking the square root of this thing, right? And then you're going to take the square root of that thing. It's going to be 1 minus 1 minus p squared uh, divide by 2. Of course, that covers it. And there's no further simplification we can perform here. So we are simply done. Ne. We are simply done. All right, guys. Um, they gave you a bit of a nice question there as well. That makes you think a bit. I mean, this is the one that would be a bit more marks than the previous ones. They were pretty direct. Here, I don't understand because at the end of the day, you had to come up with something else that was not even there and then expand it. I mean, that on its own is a mark. Uh, I think that is a mark to even think of it, but uh, it's fine, guys. And then we do the correct substitution here. Mm, and then, of course, the gymnastics took us to that. So it's fine. We can accept the three marks. And then we say thank you very much for an easy 18 marks. But remember, sometimes a question is going to be a bit indirect. So try to find the link like this one. If you try to solve that sine of 9 degrees directly, you're going to be in trouble because what are you going to do? But try to see what you have. How could you end up with this, with what you have? And that's how you do your magic. All right, guys. That is great. Now, I don't know if our friends are going to do the thing that they do all the time, but we'll just keep going just in case they don't do it. But I know they are going to do it. But if they cut us, I'll do another video and pick up from wherever they will do it. All right, question six says, without using a calculator, simplify the following. I mean, this is grade 11 stuff. So here you need to be very good. I mean, this one, you need to know that that is a second quadrant, so to speak. But yeah, it does a number on people for a while. Is it the fourth quadrant or second? Is it the second quadrant or is it the fourth quadrant? Yeah, you're not late, but I think it's the second quadrant. But anyway, let's just go for it before we start talking nonsense. And then here, you know, when you're dealing with trigonometric expressions, it's board mass because that is basically arithmetic. Of course, every now and then, if you have double angles, but you can see here that you don't have any double angles, so you're not going to be needing much. But here, with a square, maybe you may need to factorize along the way, but you won't need identities per se. Because sine squared, sine squared, looks like it's going to just be fine. All right, so let's do it. 6.1, we have sine of 180 degrees minus x times of x minus 180 degrees uh, times cos of 360 degrees plus x all of that um, to sine squared 180 degrees plus x uh, plus sine squared 90 degrees minus x Okay, just make sure everything is copied properly. This is equal to well We know that we deal with our brackets as quickly as we can so this is good because sine in the second quarter is positive So this is sine of x multiplied by you see now here the issue is if you take out a common factor here 10 becomes negative because 10 of a negative angle is negative but because 180 minus x is going to be in the second quadrant where 10 is negative it's going to bounce back as positive so this is basically 10 of x of course i'm working it in my mind because i know how it's worked but if you don't know how this is worked watch my previous video on the free state i tried to show the expansion but it's going to waste our time at this point okay multiplied by this one cos of 360 plus this is effectively in theory even if it is big once you say 360 plus you assume you are in the first quadrant and that is positive okay come down here sine 
the issue here is that it's going to be sine of x minus sine of x né? but you square it okay make sure you don't make that error plus here sine is positive in the first quadrant but 90 plus core ratio of course is going to be positive so it's going to be cos squared x okay so what do we do here we have sine of x multiplied by of course 10 can be converted to sine of x over cos of x at least identities come in here multiplied by cos of x over 1 over 1 then here we're going to have sine squared x plus cos squared x yeah maybe I rushed I thought we we're going to just do board mass alone but of course we can take out this guy and that guy and then all we end up with is sine squared x over cos squared plus sine squared x is 1 from you know your your square identity therefore this is just sine squared x as our answer so that is as easy as that guys so that six marks is pretty simple so you don't really need to to panic let's not even attempt to give marks time is array is already against us okay maybe let me answer the next question right over here there's a, there's a bit of space here okay so let's have a look at this one now it says without using a calculator determine the value of of course you can just do it and get the answer but I would rather you don't put yourself under pressure just work it out and then check it later uh, don't blink my thingy 6.2 so I have here cos of sorry 330 degrees multiplied by 10 150 degrees multiplied by sine of 12 degrees and then all of that over 10 of 675 degrees times cos of 258 degrees okay not a problem already you can see that there's something strange here the rest you can tell that well special angles can work can work but this one also it must have some relation to that because it's even but it's unusual so these two guys are odd ones out so I mean you need to have an eye to already spot these things so that you can see what you need to do so next thing is we do reduction formula this is cos of 360 degrees minus 30 degrees okay just going to show you because we were once they say don't use a calculator they want to see this or at least show up with this ne? at least uh, but I'm going to go about it the way I was taught so this is going to be 10 of 180 degrees minus 30 degrees ne? times sine of 12 degrees that one is already small so I'm not going to try to manipulate it we we'll leave it as it as it is so now 10 6 7 5 this is the same as 10 of 360 degrees plus let's see how much must we add first of all you start off by small let's say 6 7 5 minus 360 it says 2 7 5 Uh, no 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 I pushed I put the wrong thing this is six seven five minus three sixty is three fifteen so this is three hundred and fifteen now it makes sense because I know there's gonna be a forty five here somewhere course of two five eight this one I want it to look like twelve so how do I get 258 um, let's see 258 and 180 let's just say 258 minus 180 it's 70 so uh, I'm 10 by little bang 258 minus 180 it's 78 so this is the same as cos of 180 degrees plus 78 degrees okay easy stuff so now we can try and convince someone we did this without a calculator of course they know we, we used it somewhere cos of 360 minus fourth quadrant so this is the same as cos of 30 degrees and cos is positive times 
10 of this is going to be minus 10 of 30 degrees because 10 is negative in the second quadrant times sine of 12. Now we deal with this situation that if we're saying plus, this is effectively in the first quadrant. So we have 10 of 315 degrees times um, here. 180 plus is going to be effectively minus cos of 78 Ooh, degrees. Okay, not a problem. Now I can be able to take my shortcuts if I want. Uh, I'm going to leave this one as cos 30 degrees for now into minus 10 30 degrees times sine of 12 degrees. Uh, that is 12, not 1 to 8. All right, now what is this? This is going to be minus 10 of 45 because this is the same as 360 minus 45, which is 315, but 10 is negative in the fourth quadrant. Then into minus cos, but now 78 basically. Uh, 78 is effectively, maybe let's just say this is exactly minus uh, sine. This is minus sine of 12 degrees because 78 is effectively 90 minus 12. And then we go for core functions, but because there was already a negative there, so it, it remains. And then look at that, sine 12 goes. So we are left with cos of 30 is a root 3 over 2 and then 10 of 30 I deliver is multiplied by root 3 over 3 my calculator does that but this one is going to catch you out but yeah 10 of 30 opposite is 1 over root 3 so it's 1 over root 3 actually They will know that you cheated if you started like that, yeah. And then, um, that is good. So we can just say here, divide by minus 10 of 45 is 1 over root 2. Ka. Ka kwaba. So what would be the answer there, guys? So obviously, root 3 cancels. So we have a half divide by 1 over root 2. So it's 0, 0,5 divide by uh, 1 over I man. So in parallel into some color copy. So this is going to be basically 2 root 2. Which is fine. Which is fine. Because 2 root 2 is basically 1 over root 2. But in any case this is going to be, remember that was negative, so negative divided by negative is effectively a positive, so we get a positive answer, unless I messed up some way, ne. because sometimes it's always possible to make a meal of a situation, and then you end up where you don't want to be. Let me just double check. Did I do everything correctly? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me just check. This is negative. So that whole thing must be negative. And then of course cos of that is root 3 over 2 multiplied by 1030. The opposite side is 1. The adjacent side is root 3. Yeah. And then we're going to say all of that divide by 1 over root 2. So it should be 2 root 2. Ne? Unless Kitsubama take 1. Yeah, unless actually I lied. Yeah, 10 of 45 is 1, man. Why did I do that? Yeah, look. Ah, 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 ah. You know, I'm going to be able to Anyway, yeah. I'm going to be able to 1 to 1. 
then to lena 45 not 30 in my mind i'm doing 10 of 30 that's why i did such a stupid thing there so we have here basically root 3 over 2 multiplied by minus 1 over root 3 that is the one that got me stuck all of that divide by minus into 1 so this is minus a half divided by minus one, which is basically a half. Okay, makes a bit of sense. Otherwise, yeah, imagine you can go all the way, Baba, and start to slumber here. But do you see when you've shown all your steps? Because the answer is only one mark of weight. So at the end of the day, you'll still pick up the marks that you need. So a seven mark question, you may just lose one or two marks. And you have all the five marks. So make sure all your steps are shown. So it looks like our friends are giving us a bit of a break. So if they do so, we charge ahead. Okay. So we're going to do 6.3. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to move quick. I'm not going to waste time. Here it says, given the identity, then prove the identity. So you guys know that you're going to have to copy this whole thing, right? I'm not going to do it. I'll just start with the left hand side now. 6.3.1. So cos of alpha plus cos of 2 alpha over sine 2 alpha minus sine of alpha. Of course, I need to prove this to be equal to the right hand side. So not a problem. So what do we do here? Again, you know your steps. One is board mass or bomb dust. This is the main one when you're dealing with algebraic expressions, isn't it? Brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction in that order. The second step is to try and factorize. Factorization, you can take out the highest common factor. You can do um, a factorization of a trinomial by two or square brackets or two brackets. And then you can do a difference of two squares where one bracket which is the same as the other but the signs between the terms are opposite right and then of course the last one is identities as you will see mostly this is what is your workhorse the others are just keys to the doors now let's look ahead here do we have any common factors that we can add no we can cancel out factors no so our board mass here doesn't work secondly can we factorize anything not yet then we go to the last one. Identities, yes, we can because of a cos 2x, we have a sine 2x. So we can start there. So we have cos of alpha. Now, for us to be able to deal with this, we need to change this into the cos form of a double angle. So that cos form is plus is 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. Ne? Then we come back and say, now let's look at this one at the bottom. This one is basically 2 sine alpha cos alpha minus sine alpha. Okay, great stuff. Now, do we have any like terms at this point? No, we just have to deal with that. And just, in fact, these brackets are effectively non-existent. But maybe let's write it clearly. Cos alpha plus 2 cos squared alpha minus one ish i didn't write them in the correct order now it's going to be a problem this is cos alpha minus sine alpha all right now what can we do we can see that this is a trinomial although it's not in order now i'm in trouble for that but yeah i can attempt to factorize because i still don't have like terms i don't have like terms and i cannot do my board mass I don't have factors that I can take out. I cannot do anything. So I am here now. Station here is to factorize this thing. And then let's factorize the top. It's going to be 2 cos alpha and then cos alpha. Think of cos alpha as, it, as x and then 1 and 1. But now this bracket is positive. So this one must be positive and that one must be negative. That is sorted. You can take it back. Then here, what is the way of factorizing this one is to take out the highest common factor, which is just what? Sine alpha into, we remain with 2 cos alpha minus 1. 
So we like, thank you very much. That one, these are factors now. We're back to our board mass. We can actually cancel out factors. That's our division there. And then what are we left with is cos alpha plus one over sine of alpha. Now the question is, is it not the same as what we want? It definitely is. This is equal to the right hand side. Always make that final conclusion. So this is core, we've done it. We have done it. So let's move on, guys. Um, so we go 6.3.2. Next one says, uh, for which values of alpha is the identity un undefined? And you're not given a range, I mean a domain. So there's no domain given to you. That means they want a general solution of values of alpha. Because remember, this thing can repeat to infinity. So if there's no domain, if they didn't say within this particular domain, then you're going to effectively just do a general solution and leave it at that. Please, these are the kinds of questions that need you to to be proactive okay a little bit so how will this be undefined well you know that for something that is a fraction to be undefined you focus on the denominators these must not be zero otherwise when these are zeros you can't divide by zero it is undefined so that is the essence this is when sine 2 alpha minus sine alpha is equal to zero or sine alpha is equal to zero always consider that as well okay so let's work it out so what are we going to do here we use our identities here it's going to be two sine alpha cos alpha uh, So uh, what are we going to do, man? Trying to think now. Um, so cos alpha minus sine alpha equal to zero. Of course, that one is the same, so we're not going to deal with it at this point. And then what can we do here? Same story here. We want uh, a common factor. So this is going to be what? This is going to be sine of alpha into 2 cos alpha minus 1 equal to 0 therefore it tells us that it's going to be sine alpha equal to 0 or cos alpha equals to a half I'm moving quick okay but remember this one is revealing that so we can just work it down here we don't have to go anywhere else then it tells you and I that alpha is going to be equal to arc sine of zero is zero okay nothing changes with that so even if you say uh, you're going to have to consider two solutions of course <sighs> hey this thing can be a nightmare don't you think mm -hmm. it can be a nightmare but i think we can simply say here this is arc sine zero uh, so it's going to be basically plus k times 360 or alpha is going to be equal to I mean for sine you always have to think about but I mean when the zero it's pretty much good isn't it Ah, let's just do it. It's going to always be 180 degrees minus arc sine of 0 plus k times 360. Or you come to cos. Cos is nice because alpha is going to be just plus or minus arc cos of our half plus k times 360 degrees where k is an element of integers. Okay, This is a bit messy, but what can you do? So arc sine of zero, we said alpha is going to be zero degrees. Let me just double check, yeah, but it should be. Yeah, it's zero. So it's zero degrees 
plus k times 360 degrees or alpha is equal to I mean this one is going to be 0 180 minus 0 is 0 so do you really want that Ugh, this one already gives you what you need isn't it yeah but let's just do it let's just do it it's always okay so this is gonna be 180 degrees plus k times 360 degrees or alpha is going to be plus or minus this one is better because it saves us our problem cos of half is 60 degrees plus k times 360 degrees where k is an element of those numbers so I think this is just the annoying part when there's a sign sign always forces you to repeat certain things otherwise it causes a few problems if you don't do it it's all because of how how long it takes to do its thing but others pretty much play around the same way that it's so easy to figure it out anyway anyhow this is how you score your marks because it's basically general solutions for these things and general solutions you're not going to be able to test specific values so if they gave you a domain you could and then you'll be able to eliminate others which may be within the domain but not satisfy the equation but at this point we cannot really care about restrictions because this is essentially a general solution question asked indirectly okay we continue doing our thing so we are right where I want to be okay yeah we're going to cut it after this one and then we can handle Euclidean geometry alone here they didn't do the 3d structure so it's fine we can end it here with our trig and then we will just continue with Euclid alone all right um, now question 7 says given f of x equals sine 2x now look at that first of all always inspect your graph your function has an amplitude of 1 so that means its maximum is going to be minus 1 and 1 so maximum and minimum all right or minimum and maximum so these are the things you want to look at but look at that there is a frequency or a multiple to the angle so it means the period of this function is going to be the original divided by the coefficient of x which is 180 degrees meaning this one should complete a full cycle at 180 degrees instead of the original otherwise everything else is the same maximum minimum is the same but also since you know the critical values of a sine graph it's going to be usually 90 180 270 and 360 but these ones are going to be halved so that 90 divided by 2 it takes it to 45 that 180 divided by 2 takes it to 90 so whatever was supposed to happen in those spots you take your critical values you divide them by 2 this is where your graph is going to change shape okay so mind you those critical values they just go in 90s for cos and sine it's 0 90 180 270 360 they go in 90s easy so when there's a multiple whatever that multiple is you take those very known critical values you just divide them by this number it gives you your new critical values so you see life is easy trick is easy man. their functions are even easier than algebraic functions i believe because these ones there's just very easy ways to work them out anyway we are sorted so um let's just explore this one quickly cos here what is happening before the function again the amplitude is 1 so there's no multiple so the multiple here gives you a different amplitude and therefore that means the minimum and max also will range between minus 1 and 1 okay always 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 do this little bit of work here. but now is there multiple for cos no so that means the period is going to be 360 degrees because this is the basically going to be over one so you always look for the coefficient of x but what happened here there is a horizontal horizontal shift or translation some people use that word translation 
so it is translated but now we don't know which direction for now by looking at the function alone we know the domain of this whole graph is minus 180 to 180 Okay, let's read on. We are told here the graphs of f and g intersect at b, d, sorry, intersect at b and d. Okay, so there is b and there is d. But here, maybe, I mean, they do intersect. I mean, a touch is still an intersection, but yeah, maybe they always use the word intersecting for cutting, but here they touch, okay, but they still intersect because they touch. But yeah, it's fine. And then is the y-intercept of g. Okay, we can see that. And C is the turning point. Okay. If they tell you these things, it's very important that they say that because in some question papers, you have to figure these things out, but it's a bit unfair because they need to say what is what because it's very difficult to guess. I mean, if this is the turning point, then this means this is vertical there, so we need to find that. But that turning point is at a minimum, right? Maximum and minimum. So this is at the same level as this one's turning point. Despite that this line is doing something really criminal. So here I think the turning point coincides with that. But I'm just going to take a guess for now and leave it alone and then I'll also assume that that intercept coincides with this turning point but don't assume a lot eh? make sure make sure you play it safe you don't go there <laughs> and then of course the maximum they go to one we saw that this highest value here for both graphs must be one but yeah this is just trying to sabotage me because you see they elevated too high but yeah I think we've done a bit of work here and in fact I believe that this is gonna be the same as that one but be careful these things are never drawn to scale and you can see how horrible they can do it with the North Northwest uh, papers I, I was really unhappy with those diagrams especially for paper one mm, question four not very interesting like that is 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 bad is bad is bad is bad but ah uh, we can't judge too much eh? because what's the point I'm looking for my nice pen now it's not in my vision Where's my other green one? Here one. Hey. Who can take things that don't belong to them? Oh man, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Okay guys, now that we know everything, uh, they are telling us that C is the turning point of G, A is the turning point of A. Okay. So that's fine. Okay, there's another turning point. Yeah, that's all right. That's mean that means it's a maximum. Okay, okay, okay. So just do your best to make sure your sketch makes sense to you. Ne? Please, 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 please make sure it does make sense every time. Whatever you do, make sure it makes sense. Mathematically, trigonometrically, geometrically, algebraically. All right, um, let's do our analysis. Now let's start with the graph of um, F okay the graph of F is the sine graph and we know sine cuts at the origin but something changed we said the critical value sine is 0 at 0 so that one never changes at least but it becomes 9 it becomes 1 at 90 but now this is going to be divided by 2 so 90 divided by 2 is 45 so this tells us that we are at 45 degrees day just divide the usual critical value by the coefficient of your angle you get the new critical value but know what is happening at those points I think I've done a sketch of these ones in your in my previous video from the free state so please just have a look there um, and then come back here and I mean I can't do it all the time it's, it's just gonna be tedious all right, um, so that is the story. So you know there that is happening. Again, it was supposed to intercept at 180. 
but now it's doing it at 90 why because we're going to take that original one say 180 divided by 2 it gives us 90 okay great stuff and this graph was supposed to hit its minimum at um, 180 no not 180 270 the sine graph hits its minimum at 270 it becomes minus 1 but if you divide that by 2 it gives you 135 yes 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 so that means here we are at 135 degrees for us to get to that minimum I really don't care whether this one is cutting at this point but I'm just focusing on my f function just to try and understand things it was supposed to come to rest or baseline at 360 but now it's doing it at 180 why because you divided 360 by 2 and look at that you have a full wave at 180 so it is exactly the graph that you expect we go back to this side it was supposed to reach this one at minus 90 so if you divide that by 2 you get minus 45 degrees and then it was supposed to reach its max at 270 and then it will do that at half of that so it's going to be minus 135 degrees over there ne. wonderful and then of course it comes to rest so we are done with our sine graph we, we know exactly what every point is but remember you're doing these yourself you have not answered the questions so we have to answer questions so we are going to still say as much as you know what is happening you now need to explain it when they want it but if they say write down then you're at an advantage if they say determine then you can show it but still you know what it is all right anyway let's look at the graph of um, what is that one uh, let's look at the graph of alright so we look at the graph of G G of X uh, what is happening with G G is cos right so cos of X I mean cos plus X now we need to know what does cos do normally at zero cos is at maximum one but cos now is doing the maximum the very first maximum from from the origin usually it starts exactly at a maximum at the origin but now it's doing the maximum just after the origin which is at 45 so that means we shifted our cos graph 45 degrees to the right and that already gives you the value for a there that our a is minus 45 degrees because when you shift to the left sorry to the right we subtract so you see knowing those things that okay I know what the cost should look like but what is this one doing its first maximum is 45 degrees instead of zero therefore we shifted things to the right because you know now that okay this is where this is happening because I already told you that uh, this is a turning point just to give you an idea that there is no mistake so they're trying to give you a guide so greatly so now it follows that our g of x is equal to cos of x minus 45 degrees so we are fine so that means every other critical value of cos is going to shift 45 degrees to the right cos was supposed to cut the x-axis at 90 degrees right we know that but now it's going to do it 45 degrees later so 90 plus 45 is 135 so that is exactly correct over there okay let's forget about other things at this point we just want to focus on the critical values and then it was supposed to cut at minus 90 then it's going to do it 45 later so this is correct so it's cutting right there so do you see these points coincide correctly as we thought and then it was meant to reach its minimum at 180 remember cos of 180 is minus 1 so minus 180 is still minus 1 so the thing is it's going to do it 45 degrees later which is 135 again this is correct for our cost graph so we are sorted always focus on the critical values when you interpret these graphs let the rest come to you it's not a big deal once you sort the critical values everything else falls into place because these graphs are symmetrical about you know certain lines of importance okay 
I hope that is fine, guys. So with all of that done, I think we are ready to now answer the questions, which is exactly where everyone needs to be comfortable now because we have really worked our graph and we understand what is going on. So question seven can be answered like sua. Write down the value of A. Do you see? Write down. So they need you to work it out. So already did. So A is minus 45 degrees. So sometimes at an advantage if you do a bit of working. They will spare you the pain. State the period of F again. You see, already worked it out. So when they say state is the same as write down or give or what, you just give the answer. So we know that the period is going to be 180 degrees, one mark. Okay, now determine, now that is a question. You have to not just show up with an answer. Determine the coordinates of C and E, okay? So what is C is the turning point of our G. C is the, I mean, sorry, E is the y-intercept of our E, so we have to work these ones out. But paying attention to the fact that we need to focus on those areas specifically. So 7.3, we can do it this way and say, for C is such that C is the turning point. Right, right. And therefore we know that this is minus 1 at that point. So we can just say it is such that cos of x minus 45 degrees is equal to minus 1. So we already know it. Of course, we can say that the minimum value is the turning point, okay? Which implies what? Now, we know that x minus 45 degrees is going to be equal to, here we're going to just say arc cos of minus 1. We don't want to stress ourselves and do a lot of things which is going to be x minus 45 degrees is equal to plus or minus. Ne? Is plus or minus. So that one, arc cos of minus 1, I think it's going to give us 1, 8. Minus 1, 8. Yeah, it's going to be 1, 8. Okay. Of course, you know, plus this, this. Those are the general solutions, but we're not interested in that at this point. So we can say, therefore, our x is going to be equal to, but where is this? C is here. So we're going to have to think about a situation where we are going to take this as minus 180 plus when we transpose that 145 because for us to move this point from 180 to 45, it must be a plus. So do you see it correct? So once you have that, you just take the negative because you know where you are. So you're going to use that proximity. Therefore, our x is going to be equal to minus 135 degrees. And therefore, c is this point minus 135 degrees is 2 minus 1. That is the first one. Okay. 2. What is the story here? Uh, we want coordinates of E. So E is such that, remember this is an y-intercept. Y-intercept means x must be 0. So we're going to have cos of 0 uh, minus 45 degrees. Uh, of course, 0 degrees there is equal to okay, 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 or is equal to y. Maybe I should have written y equals that. It would have been easier. So this implies that y is equal to cos of minus 45 degrees. And then we can say therefore y is, so let's do it, cos minus 45, which we know that is going to be positive, right? Because that is exactly what was supposed to be. Ah, <sighs> This thing is good, man. Yo, 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 yo. So this is going to be, uh, say, root 2 over 2. We can say, therefore, E, what was x there? 0 is 2 root 2 over 2. And you can tell that it was not 1. 
So they said determine. Unfortunately, you have to really do some calculation, but still bring your understanding of where you are so that you don't get lost in the cracks over there. So they were just giving three marks, which is whew. So two marks for that one, then maybe one mark for this one. Not a problem, it's sorted. Now they say write down the amplitude of h if h of x equals 3 times f of x, okay? So, well, we're going to say 7.4. We start off by saying h of x is going to be 3 into f of x, which is 3 into sine of 2x, right? f of x was the sine graph, which is going to be 3 sine 2x. Therefore, the amplitude is going to be equal to 3. It's just that coefficient. So there's nothing serious about that one. Did they say amplitude? Yes. So 3 marks. Again, they said write down. Uh, okay, one mark. I was wondering why they're giving 3 marks. So that's one. I was wondering. I was wondering. Okay. Why must I wonder, man? Cannot be found wanting, isn't it? If you find me wanting, where is my question paper? Now, come on, question paper, stop hiding. Don't hide from me, man. Do not hide from me, Baba. Okay, let's do it. There you are. Okay, so it says now, determine. Again, determine. So at some point, yeah, but these questions are interpretatory, so you don't really have to explain, usually. As much as they said determine, Sometimes you don't have to show a calculation. It's not really necessary. So you also have to remember that your experience in these questions and how you answer them. And also please double check with the memorandum how they answer these questions so that you don't become too far off the way that they answer them so that you can make yourself, you know, great. Okay. In this region, so they're giving us this domain here from 0 to 180 where g of x is greater than f of x. Again, we just use the graph here. So you can just say from the graph, this is, just to try and to show them that you used the graph because they didn't really direct you. They just said determine. But you can say from the graph, but they also know that you used it. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. So when do we see g of x, which is the graph of this one, above, Focus on your careers, Buffett, and becoming much hard. Anyway, um, let's go on. Sorry for that, if it offends someone, but unfortunately it's the reality we face today, right? So this is this region that we are actually uh, entertaining. So we are like, this is our feasible region, if you guys ever did. Uh, you know, um, linear program, I don't know why they took it out, they should bring it back, it's fun. It's fun. So this is the feasible region in this Oh no, there's another one. Here when. Here when I give a little shwa. Kampa ke ubolaya. Again here. That region also is the feasible region. So in that domain that they gave us, we only have to focus on those two points. I'm glad. You know why they did that? Because they didn't give us this one and they don't want us to calculate that. So it makes it easier because they've already given us that one. So basically, here they are equal, they are equal. So those points are not included, but they are our means to an end. They are sort of like the domain or the range. So 7.5, uh, 7.5.1. We will answer it this way. So we can say x is less than 165 degrees. I mean, it's gonna be the x coordinate there because they said values of x. But greater than, we determined that one is 45. Okay, great. Or maybe I should have started with that one. 
this one x must be less than 45 degrees greater than 0 ah no 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 greater than or equal to 0 because remember this one is still above that one they're not exactly equal so it must be greater or equal to but less than definitely less than because they're equal in those points so at the end of the day guys this is exactly how nice this thing is it is very 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 nice it is very 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 nice so we are sorted we are sorted. If you do it like this, it's great. Life is nice because our 45 is never included here because they are equal at 45. So how many marks were they giving you? Two marks. Ah, usually this form gives you two marks. Two marks. You should give us four marks, guys. Come on. You gave marks where they were not really necessary. 7.5.2. All right, so let's do this one. G prime. Once you see G prime, you know that you're talking gradients. Okay? Don't even worry about doing the first derivative, but maybe someday, maybe for those who will be doing metric next year, I will show them how to do that derivative just for enrichment for them. You know, they don't need to know how to do it. Just for enrichment to compare what we theoretically extrapolate is it extrapolation or interpolation whatever but whatever we take from theory and say it is so you can actually prove it by doing it algebraically and graphically displaying that and then you will actually see that the y values of the derivative will actually coincide with the type of gradients you get on the original function anyway so we want the multiplication of these two to be either greater or equal to zero so once this is included here, the equal sign, it means the stationary points are included because at the stationary points, the gradients are zero. So we're looking for gradients that are both negative or zero or gradients that are both positive and zero. Okay, so uh, what we can see here is that, well, at this point over here, we just start over here the gradient is 0 for G and also it's doing a stationary point over there it's 0 because you know that sine of minus 135 is definitely gonna be that one because we double that it becomes minus 270 which becomes a positive value now okay all right let me just double check in case I'm lying hey when it's possible pale positive one. So basically we know that there's no mistake in doing that even though we're not told but that's what it is. So we're going to focus on these turning points because look here if you draw a tangent here this is a negative gradient compared to a tangent anywhere on that graph. So if you multiply that tangent and this one in terms of their signs you will get a negative number. You're not going to get a, a number that is positive or zero but these ones at the turning points they are zero okay that's a good point to start again there is a problem here because this is a negative gradient if you draw a tangent over there and you draw another tangent on this one so this tangent multiplied by that tangent not gonna work ne? so this is going to happen all the way until here okay because these gradients are not the same. That one is positive, that one is negative. So this means this region here is axed, as well as this region from there to there is also axed because they crease and cross. They don't really do the same thing at the same time. But look at this region here. This one takes a positive gradient from a zero gradient at the turning point takes a positive one and then that one is positive as well so this region is correct because positive times positive is accepted uh, positive times zero is accepted so we know that from 45 going forward we are getting positive gradients until that stationary point over there which is also included all right again look at that if you do a tangent here 
just gonna show it here and then you do another tangent over there you will see that these gradients are both negative so if you multiply them together they will give you zero this happens all the way until that stationary point because it is itself included and then after that there's a crisscross this one is negative while this one is positive and it happens all the way until that 180 mark so this means this region here is out so what are we looking at here we're looking at this region uh, so we're looking at this region from here all the way to 45 right all the way to 45 and we continue our path all the way to that one so that means we can just focus on these two endpoints because nothing changes in between so we simply are going to answer this question this way we can say x must be less than or equal to because the gradient is zero for the other at that point of 135 degrees must be greater than or equal to because the other one is zero there uh, minus 45 degrees then you are sorted because you have answered the question you have answered the question all right oh sorry 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 guys I made a mistake now they gave us zero remember this domain is for the rest of this so now I'm making an error so this one must be zero then it must be zero degrees why because this part is still okay so that means they decided that this is over here and they that one is out because of the constraint otherwise it satisfied the equation all right guys not a problem um so this is two marks usually this form is two marks and then let's do the last one 7.6 i hope you guys are already going to feel very fried at this it says without solving the equation again you see once they highlight something it means follow it if you do otherwise you're not gonna get marks use the above graphs to show how you would solve the following equation all right so we are given here square root 2 times sine 2x equals cos x plus sine x okay so they're saying we have to show how we're going to solve this by using these graphs now the situation is always try your target is to try and get your functions out of any equation they give you work it so that you can see these functions together somehow that is your target so you want to see sine 2x and you want to see cos of x minus 45 if you can do that then that's how you're gonna do it so every time you are given something strange make sure you work it out to look like those functions that is just the key there's no other key to this now you can already see here that I already have sine 2x so I can leave this one and just divide by square root 2 if you do it for each individual one you do that of course you can combine the two and separate them algebraically it just means that each one has the same denominator and then that one is gone so we have sine 2x equal to now you can already try and simplify your life here and say fine this is the same as uh, say cos of x multiplied by 1 over root 2 you just factor it out like that because you are trying to arrive back to your function they did something to it and then they want it to work back so this is the same as sine of x multiplied by 1 over root 2 then you know that okay therefore this also implies that I have sine 2x equals then you know that this is cos of x but now what would this one be you want this to become a cos function so you know that is cos of the first angle right multiplied by cos of the second angle this second angle you can see is 45 from special angles you know that this was cos of 45 degrees and then plus 
this is sine of x multiplied by again you want to create a, a cos function so this must be sine of 45 because it is also 1 over root 2 so you become a bit crafty but within you know acceptable means therefore this is the sine of 2x equals then you know that for a cos function is going to be cos of the first angle minus the second angle if the sign is positive and that's it and can you see now this is basically where this is equal to that on the graph so this is going to be point D point A and point B so you can say therefore uh, there are two functions would be red equal at points C A and B I think that is the best way you can do it because I said don't solve the without solving the equation meaning by the way when we say solving the equation we simply mean solving for x okay so don't say ah but you solved it now and you showed no this was just to show <laughs> this was a show that was not solving we didn't solve anything because we still don't know the value of x but we just wanted to bring back the hidden one i think in the 20 was it 2020 there is a nice question on the 2020 and I will do it with you guys maybe just that question on the graphs because I don't really want to waste your time by doing all this for you you have to practice yourselves please but I'll show you on that one just to cement our understanding of our functions and to show you that whenever they give you something funny there's always a way of working it out but you need to be very strategic about it don't be haphazard it's always going to hurt if you're haphazard but if you're strategic, it's always going to be very easy and you're just going to always feel happy. All right, guys, um, you can already see that we did it. So you always think of how you know things and you just work things out. All right. And then, of course, someone may ask and say, but hold on. What if I did not align these here? Instead, I aligned them before. Let's just say you had a situation where you had your sine 2x is equal to, you decided you're going to put a 1 over root 2 there. Bonage. Sine 2x. Let me try and be a bit slow. You know that I realized some of the reasons I write bad is because I let my brain move too fast for me. And then you said here, um, sine of x okay maybe let's say you did that and then you'll be like what am i gonna do forget that one because I already know of course this could have been cos 45 degrees cos of x plus sine 45 degrees sine of x ne? right this is the same as cos of 45 degrees minus x okay which is not like what you want but how can you make it what you want you can say cos you draw out a common factor which is a negative you end up with x minus 45 degrees you close it what is cos of a negative angle is positive so it still comes back guys but you just have to work it out because you can't leave it like that if you really 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 want to show something so I mean be comfortable with your maths such that you can do pretty much anything no matter how twisted it can come up you will be able to untwist it to exactly what you know and understand all right guys i hope uh, that was good and that you enjoyed it and that you learned from it as well otherwise um thank you very much for working together with me and thank you for your subscriptions they really give a meaning to my channel and it really 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 makes me feel like i need to do more even for the next generation of matriculants and of course if you know anybody who's going to be doing matric next year and who probably doesn't know about the channel please make sure they are aware there is something that they can gain from the channel of course by no means limit them to this channel but just give them as an option so that they can just come and have a look and see if they can learn anything 
and then of course do check other people's channels who may actually do a better job than I do but sometimes I may do things that probably they would not get with others so the idea is to just keep your equation balanced and to do so you have to you know don't put all your little things in one nest they say yeah your eggs in one nest spread them around but if you be one of those who are doing metric and maybe you may be lucky I'll call it luck that you would maybe have to do a supplementary next year you already have a resource here in this channel and of course you already know others as well so you combine that otherwise guys bye bye for now I'll see you in the next video I'll probably just trick one single question that November 2020 just a graph the trigonometric graph I think we've done pretty much enough now for paper two all you have left is to practice but if you run into problems and you need a an explanation or some you know second look into it with my aid you are free I'll put my uh, email in the description just email me those questions but make sure you are able to connect through Google Meet or Duo so that if we decide to do this like online we can do that nicely for you all right okay guys otherwise enjoy more practice I'll do the next video which is going to be the Euclidean section of this paper and seal this paper too but I would advise you keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing don't just watch, it's easy to watch, it's easy to see when an idea comes to somebody else but it becomes a challenge when you are faced with it so get used into making the reasoning yourself then supplement that with someone else's work otherwise you'll be a genius that 100% is on sites Bye-bye.